got another one of them. Popping at the mouth or the side of his neck when he pouts. No argument, no rebuttal from. He ain't from my town. I don't know him, so I'm guessing he's a clown. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Today, we're going to do Full Gear 2021 predictions. I don't know when the last time I did a prediction show for AEW, but I don't know. Let's talk about this one. Um, I was not thrilled with Dynamite, the go home show. Uh, this is being recorded before Rampage. I don't know when I'm going to release it. But um, so we're going to go through the predictions based off of the available information that we have. All right, so the buy-in match, Nyla Rose and Jamie Hayter versus Thunder Rose and Anna Jay. Uh, Thunder Rose and Anna Jay. Just because uh, I don't see any. I don't care who wins, okay? Nobody does. Uh, tournament final, AEW World Title Eliminator, Miro versus Brian Danielson. So you have two branches on this tree. The Miro branch, which uh, continues his Redeemer storyline, which is kind of necessary for his character. I mean, if he loses again, what does that mean for the character? We see what one loss has done to the character. It's turned him into, you know, a man who questions and challenges God. What do we do if he gets beaten again? That's a good question. You know, that could mean something completely and totally awesome for the character. Versus Brian Danielson, if Danielson wins. We did the thing with Omega. I would think that this... Uh, Winning the tournament was a way to get Danielson versus Omega for the title uh, in a way that makes sense without it making it seem like he got rushed to the spot. We're making him earn it, you know. So if Danielson loses, which he, let's be honest, he probably won't. But if Danielson loses, what do you do with him? Because you've been building him up in a few with Omega. You could say, well, Omega and Danielson don't need the belt. Well, if that might be true, then why is Danielson in this tournament? If he was going to feud with Omega without the belt, then why does he? Why is he in this tournament? You know, if Miro wins, which is entirely possible, then I guess I guess I guess it's one of those things where it was the plan was for Danielson to go over, right? So obviously Moxley is going to be Moxley versus Danielson, and Danielson was going to go over. But I think Danielson still is going to go over. So I'm going to go with Danielson. So I'm really going to be interested in what's going to happen with Miro. But I don't think that they're going to immediately have Danielson versus the champion on the next Dynamite. You know? Uh, but I wouldn't mind it if they did. Because I really do think that if uh, Brian Danielson is going to be AEW's version of It Man, which is pro wrestling's version of It Man, if we're being quite honest, then we probably should make him the champion that's just me you know they don't have to it's not necessary you know but i don't know but i'm gonna go with brian danielson but i'm very interested in what happens to miro Britt baker versus ty conti for the aew women's title um obviously Britt baker is going to win ty conti they don't even care enough to put her on tv when was the last time before this episode of dynamite that ty conti was in a featured spot on dynamite it's been months. Britt Baker's on TV every week, even if she's just cutting a promo backstage. Ty Conti, there's little to no investment in Ty Conti. So, no, it's going to be Britt Baker. The Inner Circle versus the Men of the Year and America's Top Team. It'll be Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, and Santana and Ortiz versus Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, Dan Lambert, Junior Dos Santos, and Andre Arlovsky. 10-man Minneapolis street fight. I am going to go with the Inner Circle. I think the big segment they did on Dynamite is going to lead to Inner Circle winning. The men of the year have not won anything. When was the last time they won a match? I can't tell you the last time Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page won anything. They've kept them out of the ring and doing mostly segments standing behind Dan Lambert. So this has been essentially Dan Lambert versus Chris Jericho. And that sh that's been the feud, you know? <laughs> Everybody else is just there to get the rub. Um, this ought to be interesting because of Orlovsky and Junior Dos Santos. Um, and the wrestlers don't have to out-wrestle these guys. They can hit them with chairs. They can hit them with kendo sticks. They could jump them two-on-one. There's a lot of ways to negate the whole uh, mixed martial artist uh, gimmick that these guys are have. 
And I'm pretty sure they're going to do something with Jake Hager. Um, they might do some pre-recorded stuff from what I heard. They're actually going to do some pre-recorded spots. So they might go backstage and there's going to be some pre-recorded stuff on the screen. It might be a fun uh, brawl. I don't expect anything masterful out of it. But I definitely expect the inner circle to win. Because I don't consider America's top team in men of the year to be any real threat. Now, Arlovsky and Junior Dos Santos could have been built up as being, you know, major threats. But they're in a comedy thing with Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky, who are the wrestlers of this whole ordeal. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't, I don't care about this match. But it ought to be fun. It ought to be a fun brawl, at the very least. You know, I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Andre and Junior are going to gig. I'm, I'm going to guarantee Jericho's going to gig. And probably uh, Santana and Ortiz are probably going to gig, too. Uh, MJF versus Darby Allen singles match. Two of the four pillars of AEW. Because this match has no stakes, um, I'm going to go with Darby winning. Uh, I think this, you know, we should be trying to do something with these guys in terms of titles and championships and positioning them. Um I think they kind of pulled their foot off the gas of the MJF Darby Allen feud uh, over Dynamite, which is fine because they had put so much time and effort into it. But I do think that you there there was something missing. There's a missing ingredient here. I'm not sure what it is, but and I'm also not a fan of uh, how things have been booked in terms of uh darby popping up in the crowd it's almost like every darby feels the exact same way he gets jumped and beat up the guy cuts a promo on him he doesn't show back up for a little while because he's selling the beat down then he gets jumped backstage or thrown down some stairs or something like that and then he comes back via video sting he's hiding in the crowd he's jumping from behind he's hiding in the balcony all right you know it seems like this has been a run-of-the-mill darby feud and mjf is putting over uh, Darby a lot more than uh, he would put over anyone else um, verbally let's say he was absolutely burying a lot of other guys but he seems to be taking it easy on Darby even though he cut into Darby early uh, with the whole dead uncle thing but um, he seems to be taking again like I said taking the foot off the gas on Darby a little bit um, if you're AEW I think MJF needs to win at the same time though I mean, because you don't want to beat Darby two straight pay-per-views, do you? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll say, well, MJF also lost at the last pay-per-view. So that's another good situation. I didn't really think about that until just now. So I'm going to go with Darby. I think the babyface goes over. But the question is going to be, what next? What's next for either one of these guys is, the, is a good question. You know, because this seems to be thrown together with no stakes and no thought for the future. Other than these are our two guys for the future. It's like, okay, that's cool. But what's next? What's what spins out of this? You know, do, are you going to have one of these guys challenge Sammy Guevara? If that's the case, then MJF needs to win. Because we do need to get at some point MJF in a title storyline, right? All right. The Lucha Brothers, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. versus FTR, Cash Wheeler and Dash Harwood for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. And uh, this ought to be fun, too. FTR is awesome. They're going to hopefully contain the Lucha Brothers, who can be very awesome when they follow the rules and things make sense. I'm a big fan of Lucha Libre. I like Ray Phoenix. I like Pentagon. Um, I just haven't been thrilled with their matches because it's just been guys jumping all over the place. FTR can be the rudder of the ship. And with them in place and really building the match, this could be really fun. And plus, FTR has beaten them once already under the Los Frogger, Frogos or whatever the fuck they called them. Um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Los Frogos. It was probably something. <laughs> Los Frogs. It was probably something else. But they beat them in frog costumes or whatever. So obviously the Lucha Brothers are going to go over here, which doesn't bother me too much. But uh, I would have liked it to be a little bit more contested where there is a because of the way AEW books, there's no chance FTR is going to win, which is unfortunate, you know. But that's just the way AEW books their cards and books their champions. Uh, number Match 7, CM Punk versus Darby 
Wait, what am I talking about? Senior Punch versus Eddie Kingston. <laughs> Obviously, Senior Punk is going to win. This is going to be a showcase for Eddie Kingston. He's going to go in there and beat the tar out of Senior Punk. He's going to chop him a million times. Um, the, the Eddie Kingston story is one of grit and determination and toughness and always falling short. That's the that's always Eddie Kingston's story. It's his story in every match. It's his story on the mic. It's his story as a man. Eddie Kingston fights. He almost gets there. He gets really close. He always falls short. Sure, Eddie Kingston probably should win this match in order to shove it up CM Punk's ass and shove it up the ass of everybody who said he can't do it and he can't make it. But I think they've already set up the Eddie Kingston's going to lose by him saying, I don't care about wins and losses. Which, um, the interesting thing is when you... <laughs> When Grayson Waller said that on NXT, people were really tight in the ass about it. Oh, you don't care about wins and losses, huh? You don't care about wins and losses. You know, but Eddie Kingston says it's not about wins and losses. I don't care about wins and losses. Everybody's like, oh, my God, Eddie Kingston's promo is so awesome. Oh, my goodness. It's like, it's the same thing. Grayson Waller is talking about there being things that is more important than wins and losses. It thinks about confidence. And Eddie Kingston is saying the same thing. This is about karma. This is about payback. This is about revenge on CM Punk. It's not about pinning CM Punk. It's not about beating him. It's about whooping his ass. It's about punishing him for what he did to me 15 years ago. And I can respect that because it's not guaranteed that you'll win. But it is guaranteed that you're going to at least get your hands on him. You know? So I respect Eddie Kingston tremendously. I really don't care about CM Punk. You know, he has his moments. You know, but I've had my problems with CM Punk on this channel. Doesn't mean that he's a bad wrestler or I think that he sucks as a wrestler. I just have my problems with him, <laughs> you know, but this match ought to be pretty good. It ought to be pretty fun. I respect both guys in the ring. The Eddie Kingston story is one of always fighting, fighting, fighting and always falling short. So I think that's what's going to happen here. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And uh, Christian Cage or the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage versus the Super Click, Adam Cole Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson in a trio match. I think this match is false count anywhere. Uh, so this is basically going to be another a remix of the street fight. There's going to be another street fight where guys are jumping all over the place. A thousand thigh slaps. This is going to this match is going to give me a migraine. I already know it. It's going to frustrate the hell out of me because you got the three bucks and you got Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. It's thigh slapper mania. I expect the super click to win. Mainly because, I mean, why not just do Christian versus Adam Page? Adam Page? Christian versus Adam Cole. I mean, you have so many people with the same names and similar names and shit. Uh, I think Christian versus Adam Cole could have been really fun. And I think if you built it up properly, that could have been really good. They already blown uh, Adam Cole versus Jungle Boy, which is, I don't know. You know, I like that match. I like the, the two guys involved. I don't like the Young Bucks at all. But I would have preferred Adam Cole versus Christian Cage here. I think that would have been a great highlight for Cole. It would have been a great spot for Christian. You could have put Jurassic Express in Christian's corner. But I guess you could still do this on Dynamite. You could do Adam Cole versus Christian on Dynamite, I guess. Um, so I'm guessing they didn't want too many one-on-one -on -one matches to, to distract from the main event and everything. But... That's fine. In any event, I expect uh, the Super Click to win. Uh, just because I saw Jurassic Express give the Adam Cole a concerto. Because of that alone, I think that uh, the Super Click is going to win. Cody Rose and Pac versus Malachi Black Andra and Andrade Elidolo. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Malachi Black and Andrade. I don't know why. Because I don't know why this match is happening. I'm not sure why this match is occurring. So I'm just going to say, let's give it to Malachi Black and Andrade. Because, you know, um, but, but it's a, a good question of why, you know, they broke um, Malachi Black's momentum. So he needs to get that momentum back. Let's just go with Malachi Black and Andrade. And then let's work on explaining why they're partners. Why are they friends? Let's get on explaining that. Main event, Kenny Omega versus Hangman Adam Page for the AEW world title. I think that unless Adam Page wins, 
the AEW fans will absolutely riot and bitch and complain and moan and whine and say it's the wrong kind of heat. It's all this stuff. So Adam Page is going to win because Tony Khan does not have the balls to look his fan base in the eye and say, no, we have bigger stars than Adam Page. Adam Page loses. You know, it's it's not going to is it going to hurt the brand if Adam Page wins? No, it's not going to hurt the brand at all. It's not going to um, be uh, detrimental to AEW in any way. You're not going to lose any money. You're not going to lose any sponsorships. Nothing bad is going to happen if Adam Page wins. But it will just uh, push back the possibility of somebody who is a bigger star than Adam Page being the champion. Because it's not likely that he's going to lose to Miro or Brian Danielson or CM Punk. In fact, if anything, they're going to avoid those matches because they don't want to have to put Adam Page in, that, in those situations. The problem with the fairy tale ending is the end then what? I did a video on this already. Page wins. Okay. Yay. We got the big pop. Page, we told the story, the fairy tale story. Now dynamite has to happen. You know, maybe you get MJF out there. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Adam Page versus MJF is fine. But that doesn't do MJF any favors because he's not going to win the title. They don't do short title switches like that on AEW. So if they had, if it was WWE, I would say that would be fine because then you could give Hangman Page his moment and then you could immediately switch it over to MJF and give him his, put him on top and then have Adam Page right back in the chase position. But this time he's chasing MJF. But they're not going to do that because they, they don't do that in AEW. So. I'm going to go with Adam Page. I don't think um, anything Omega in Omega's future, they're probably just going to put him like Jericho. He's going to do nothing but quote-unquote dream matches from now on, rematches with um, Danielson, matches with Punk, and none of those matches need to have the title, which is absolutely true. Their fan base is correct in terms of Omega doesn't need the title to have their quote-unquote dream matches. So... It would be better if the title were on the line because that's immediate stakes. And I think that you diminish quite a bit. And I think you also overrate Omega. I think those people think Omega is a bigger star than he really is. So that's why I put dream match in quote unquote. It's not like, you know, um, two guys, Cena and Rock. That's a dream match. You don't need a title for that match. You know, just put their names on the marquee. That's good enough. Omega is a guy that even if you kind of know who he is and you kind of, you know, you kind of want to see him wrestle CM Punk, but it ain't a must see. It ain't a, you know, big box office, you know, thing just because Omega's name on it. No, you know, it's not like that. Most people, when they were watching in Japan, they watched the entire show or, or not even the entire show, just the American guys you know, or and Omega's Canadian, but they watched his matches mostly on like YouTube and daily motion and shit. They didn't jump into the thing because Kenny Omega was there and he was such a huge draw. They may watch it, but they may watch it illegally. So he's not like a superstar, you know, but he doesn't, they're right. He doesn't need um, the title to have matches with, with Danielson and Punk and Adam Cole. He doesn't need the title for that. So we're going to go with Adam Page. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Your skin tone, so why attach yourself and piggy back the wealth you didn't earn or lack yourself? I'm telling you to own up to your own success and failures. It's a reason why these sleazy guys.